so we are almost finished with Tough Enough, and it's been, what, eight to nine weeks? It's been a great show. I was right when I said in 2009 that we, they were going to bring this back, and people were like, oh, no, they're not, no, they're not, they're not going to bring it back, fuck you, man. And about a year later, I said, they're bringing it back, and people still told me to go fuck myself in my inbox. And then, lo and behold, 2011, and it's back. So I was right, you were wrong. <clears throat> Anyways, it's not going to be kind of like a review of the season, but I kind of want to lead into who I think is going to win. Things that stood out, though, for this 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 season so far. Steve Austin was brilliant. The last ten minutes of the show were usually the highlight. Steve Austin going off on these people was just the best thing ever. Uh, most notable ones, him going off on Matt Cross, asking him, why he hasn't separated himself from the pact, and why he hasn't been the alpha male, and you need to show me something. And then the other one with the girl saying her favourite match was Alicia Fox Molina, and him looking like he's short circuited. I was like, oh my god, he's going to stun her. Please don't do it, please don't do it. But that was quite funny. Uh, him going off on Andy, the, the big giant guy, that was brilliant. When Andy got put in the bottom three and he started sulking. <laughs> And then Austin started going at him and really starting to break him. And he started getting tears in his eyes and he was flooding up. And then he's talking to the other person that he's going to eliminate. And then he said, oh, I want it more than Andy. And then Andy said something. And then Austin mocks his nickname. Silent Rage. <laughs> Sound like a goddamn Christmas carol, sir. That was flipping brilliant. And then he just got him yelling as well, didn't he? So... That was always one of the most... That, that that was probably the best bit of each show, was those last ten minutes, the elimination bit. Steve... Let's, let's be honest, Simon Cowell and Donald Trump have nothing on this man. Let's just be honest. Um, other things that stood out to me, that Max... Not Maxine, what was her name? Miss USA, Reema Fakar. God. Okay. She came off like an act to me. The way she was talking, Miss Ghetto USA, I'm gonna get y'all, you yeah, 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 all this crap, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just, listen, there are girls in Edmonton Green that I know that would beat the shit out of her, for real, who really are like that, and then you've got someone kind of, in a way, coming off like, you know, disingenuine and acting it up, so I was kind of glad when she was gone, but I think she had secret immunity for a few weeks until, like, her body, you know, basically broke down. Um, then there was the Puerto Rican girl who I did feel kind of sorry for because she did get banged up pretty badly. You had Alicia Fox's little sister who was pretty but came off as one of those valley girls, if you know what I mean. I'm really pretty. I like to wrestle. I want to buy a lot of things on my mummy's credit card. That's how she seemed, like one of those types. I was like, well, she's not going to be here for very long. Then you had Jeremiah who stood out, Matt Ross who everyone wanted to win and then got eliminated, but I wasn't that upset by it, uh, Andy, the big giant guy, Eric who was fucking useless and was an embarrassment, I'm sorry, why the fuck was he in that show? And then now we've gone down to our final two, after, oh no, hold on, before I get to that, there was AJ as well, who just kind of coasted along, coasted along, and then cut a promo that was brilliant. But that wasn't enough to save him, and he was out. So, you know, it's a shame. Then there was the Donny Osmond lookalike who busted up his ankle and was out. And then we got left with Jeremiah, Andy, and Luke. And Luke seemed to be the favourite of Steve Austin. It, to me, it looked like Steve Austin had a hard-on for him. And he was staying, no matter what. And then Jeremiah, who, to be honest, showed so much personality and heart and a lot of competitiveness to him for a guy that was very inexperienced. I think he'd only been training with Dutch Mantel maybe a few months before the show started, so yeah, that's what I'm aware of. Anyways, we got down to the final three, and on the one hand, I'm almost a little bit outraged that Jeremiah didn't get through, because Andy, to me, is just one of the standard big men that they have, and he's only starting to discover now who he is in the ring. But he should have discovered that way before and 
maximised it and, you know, brought it to its fullest capacity into Tough Enough. And then he would have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be saying this, but that's just my opinion. And he is a bit, you know, dry on the charisma aspect and the personality aspect. Luke is the, to be honest with you, the standard pretty boy that I see in every nightclub and bar with his fucking faux hawk hair and his shirt and his watch and his, I'm so good looking. He just, he looks like everybody else. That's the problem with him. But then again, on the other hand, he does project a lot more personality than Andy. And actually, there's rumours about him doing some gay fetish wrestling porn or something like that. But let's hope that doesn't come to bite him in the arse like it did ISIS. So you have Luke, who kind of is the standard looking guy. And then you have Andy, the standard big man. And then Jeremiah, who, despite his inexperience, was something different. But then the final two wound up being Andy and Luke. And we will find out the winner next week, actually. So I'm very, very interested to see how that, you know, takes part. Um, I think us as viewers will have a better idea of who really is going to win when we see the exhibition match. How they come across to the live audience, how they come across to the crowd. What kind of things you can do. Um, I would say I favour Luke because he probably has the most experience out between him and Andy. Seems to be the most ready to use right away, even though he, you know, I think he needs to do some things to separate himself from the rest of the roster. Uh, Andy could probably end up being the standard big man, but, I mean, he's very, very dry in charisma, but that's just my opinion. Anyways, I have gone on and on and on and on and on. And I'm tired of talking, so I want to know what everyone thinks. Who do you think is going to win this season? Big old Andy or Pretty Boy Luke? Or do you think someone else should have won? Are you one of those people that felt Matt Cross should have gone to the finals and won? Or Donny Osmond should have won? And heaven forbid anyone that says Rima for car, because I will go on a fucking outrage. Anyways, guys, take care. Let me know what you think, and I will be back very soon.